we conclude today, chapter 8, spoke about yesterday, about creating God in our own image, which means, you know, we only know our condition, we only know our experience, we only know what we understand, what we perceive with, and are aware with our minds. Until we're taught the truth, which is Torah, Torah is Emes. It's the only ultimate truth, complete truth, not half-truths, which you can get in self-help books, not to deny that there are you know, valuable teachings and lessons elsewhere, but the complete truth. And the complete truth is to be able to see beyond the human condition and not to create God in our image, or for that matter, to relate to others even, based merely on our um, experience, perception, and image. So that's what we spoke about yesterday. And therefore, ultimately, one of the names that we use for God is HaKodesh Baruch Hu, the Holy One, blessed be He. Meaning, He's holy. Holy means exalted. Exalted means beyond. Now, in this name, the author of Islam discusses here, but and elsewhere, Kaddish, holy, exalted, beyond, uh, ad infinitum, ultimately, is Baruch, is blessed, the Holy One, blessed be He. Why? That's a name. What is it? What does it mean? Blessed be he, meaning that that exaltedness is drawn down into this world. Something that we spoke about, chapter seven in particular. Um, but ultimately, God is separated by ad infinitum in His quality, and ultimately, can we really praise Him? Whatever praise, of course, is limited. So let us understand the human condition on how we um, we are. And that's what we're going to understand today. And then in the following chapter, we're going to uh, relate that to a Kaddish Baruch to God. We won't do this in this chapter, so we're going to conclude with a, a th in a sense, in the middle of a thought. That's okay. We do that often. It's one ongoing, continuous teaching thought. So, the human condition is based on five degrees of separation, and each separation is a great gulf, a great gap. Um, and what is it? The five degrees of separation in the human being begins, of course, with one's intelligence. That's where it all begins. Chachma. Chachma is the first of the ten divine attributes. So it begins with intelligence. It's the source of everything. Um, it's the supreme quality. That we have even as a matter of fact the Targum Yoinasan in the word Bereshis, the first word of the Torah translates it as to mean wisdom in other words in the beginning meaning in God's wisdom what's the beginning his wisdom right it's the first of the ten divine attributes Chachma. It is the beginning of the fountainhead of all life force in all creatures, right? Not just in a human being, but in all creatures and all creation. So much so that you can take a leaf and look and understand its uh, makeup and you can see divine wisdom, all right? Because it's coming from there. Included, of course, being of Adas in the divine level. Now, on the human level, that's where it all begins. 
And from there, our intelligence flows into our emotions, into our heart. Now, how do we see that? How do we understand that? I mean, we intuitively get that. But a child who has limited intelligence, limited understanding, therefore has limited emotions. Meaning that the child has a desire for candy, for example. Um, loves candy. Loves an ice cream. Loves pizza. Now, if you find yourself saying to him, well, I love that too. That means our intelligence hasn't developed enough. <laughs> Probably more than the child, but obviously not enough. Because when you understand more, if you understand more deeply, more profoundly, whatever in life, right? Then you're going to have a feeling and a desire of something that is much more meaningful. You're going to have a love for Tanya. You're going to have love for doing an act of goodness, of doing a mitzvah. Because your intelligence is developed and you understand the value of the mitzvah, so you have a love in it for it. Where is it coming from? It's coming from the intelligence. So the intelligence feeding the, the, uh, the heart. So we have the first degree, intelligence. There's a great gulf between the intelligence and the heart. I mean, as a matter of fact, we have a neck that it goes through. But uh, there's that you know, degree of separation right there. Then from our heart and our feelings, what gives rise to that from there? Our thoughts. We think about those things that we have strong feelings. If you have no feeling towards something, you'll never think about it. So I'm sure, you know, there's, uh, there's someone uh, that's living across the ocean. And you're not thinking about that person because you have no feelings towards him. But there might be someone across the ocean that you are thinking about because you have strong feelings, whether it's strong feelings of our love or, or the opposite. Whatever it is, the stronger the emotion, the more it will give rise to the feeling. That's another degree of separation. Another degree of separation um, to our thoughts. In other words, feelings are much more powerful than our thoughts. Intelligence is much more powerful than our feelings. And the proof is, each one is developing the other, giving rise to the other, flowing into the other, therefore it's greater, a greater degree of an expression of the human soul. Then, of course, from thoughts, what gives, uh, what, what is the vital, what does it give a vital force towards? Speech, what I'm doing right now. The fact that I, it has to be first language in thought, and that language in thought is very close to speech, it becomes the vital force of my speech. So, um, um, and then again, speech gives rise to um, action. Uh, you don't have to, you could just think it and then go to action. You don't have to go to speech. But like the king who demands or says, be charitable. So his speech is now causing the action. Our thoughts, and also when we speak about it, now vest itself, gives rise to action. Now, action not the val very important point over here. I'm not talking about the value of something, because obviously the value of action, of giving charity, for example, is much more valuable than the thought of giving charity. Because if you have the thought and you don't give, you know, what do you have there? If you were thoughtless and you still gave, you know, you still have a mitzvah. Um, 
So we're not talking about the value here. We're talking about the power of the soul to do such a thing. So to, to just, you know, the, 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 the motion of t extending your hand and giving a coin, giving something uh, to, in a pushka or to someone in need or to Chabad, <laughs> who's always in need because we always have to accomplish more is a uh, much more simpler task than the power of speech. The power of speech is much more complex expression of the soul than movement of the hand. Proof is, you know, animals also move. They don't speak about ideas as we're speaking now, much more. The thinking of those ideas, the awareness in the mind, is even a much more profound capability of the mind to think. And then the emotions, which gives rise to thought, is much greater, because there is, in, in emotions, there is no language. It's beyond language. E emotion gives rise to the language in thought, as we said, is strong feelings towards something, you'll think about it. But the feeling is without, let's be on language. And then that feeling ultimately is based on our intelligence, our perspective, our understanding. So what do we have here? Five degrees. Intelligence, emotions, speech, sorry, thought, speech, action. Action compared to the intelligence of the soul, is far removed. Again, not in value. We're not speaking about value here. Of the value of the act versus the perspective of intelligence. The power of the soul to have intelligence versus the power of the soul to do an action great degrees of separation. That's the human condition. Why is this important? Well, it's important for us to understand ourselves. But this will be continued in the next chapter in order to understand God's investment in the world. God as the power creator within creation, we have to understand within ourselves, and then we can relate that to God. Not that we're gonna create God in our image, which we could easily do, and see God from that perspective. No. But from understanding our perspective, then we're going to understand how God's perspective is not like ours. And appreciate that. Um, the distinction. But for that, more to come for our next class. An important point that comes out of this idea of the five degrees of separation, that our intelligence is on top as, as a human being, the intelligence is on top because when, when you stand forthright or upright, your head's on top, feeding your emotions, coming to speech, a thought, speech, and then action which those are three garments of expression of the soul. Um, explains to us how important it is to study Torah, God's wisdom. Because by studying God's wisdom, then His wisdom becomes my wisdom. His perspective and vision becomes my perspective and vision. And when I'm able to do that and study as we do, study Tanya, then it allows it from, to go from here, which is the most powerful, to go into my heart, to my thoughts, to my speech, and to my actions, that all of them will be flowing appropriately, one from the other, and truly impacting me in my life, and ultimately impacting the world around me. 
I'm Rabbi Ronnie Fine, coming to you from my home in Montreal, Canada, where it's a privilege and a pleasure to share with you the Tanya. Folks, share it. It's important. It's valuable. It's invaluable. Have a wonderful day, a good Erev Shabbos, and a wonderful Shabbos. Be well.